distinguished colleagues, the nominee on the podium is the former minister of the FCT, the nominee for Adamawa State. Alaji Muhammad Ubello, on behalf of all my colleagues here, I welcome you to the Senate. And we have your CV before us. However, you can still highlight anything that you feel you should emphasize. And of course, if you so wish, you can tell us even things that are outside of this uh, CV. I want once, once again welcome you here and you can address the Senate. Thank you. Your Excellency, the President of the Senate, Your Excellency, the Deputy President of the Senate, very distinguished principal officers of the Senate, distinguished senators, with your kind permission also, I want to recognize distinguished Senator Engineer Aisha Dahiru, who is a senator representing my constituency, Adamawa Central together with the two senators representing Adamawa State, Senator Cliff Ishaya Abbo and Senator Bainos Daudayero. With your kind permission also, I would like to recognize Senator Philip Tanimo Aduda, the senator representing the FCT, where I spent three and a half years as a public officer. With your kind permission, Your Excellency, I want to also just mention that Senator Ahmed Hassan Barata, who was a senator in the Seventh Assembly, has graciously escorted me to this hall, together with Senator Ahmed Abu Bakar, who was a senator of the Eighth Assembly. Also together with Honorable Musa Tanko Abari, who was a member of the House of Representatives, representing the FCT in the year 1983. Then we have Honorable Zakari Anguludobi, who was a member in the Seventh Assembly. We also have, with your kind permission, AIG retired Nuhu Ribadu, as well as the chairman of my party in Adamawa State, and also the chairman of the APC in the FCT. Uh, I want to also use this opportunity to thank all those that have joined me here, both from the FCT as well as Adamawa State. Thank you, sir. Uh, briefly, my name is Mohammed Musabello. I was born 60 years ago in Yola, Adamawa State. I did my primary school partly in Kaduna and Yola, and I conclude, finished my primary school in December of 1971 from Our Ladies High School, Kaduna. Thereafter, I proceeded to Barewa College, Zaria, where I finished my West African examination uh, in June of 1976. I proceeded to Amadou Bello University, where I did my one year uh, school of Basic Studies, and then entered my first year as an undergraduate studying business administration in the ABU in September of 1977. I graduated in ABU from ABU uh, in June of 1980 with a BSc degree in business administration. Thereafter, I commenced my career as a banker with Icon Limited Merchant Bankers uh, in Lagos. Uh, in 1984, 
I was selected among young bankers across the world, and I joined the class of 52, AMP 52, at, in a bank in the U.S. that was called J.P. Morgan. I was in a class of about 45 young bankers across the world, and at that time I was the only African. I did six months training in commercial banking and risk management, and I completed that in December of 1984. Thereafter, I came back to my job at Icon Limited Merchant Bankers, uh, and then took some time off and studied for the master's degree in business administration, and which I concluded in 1986. After working for some time with the bank, I moved back to the private sector, where I worked for about 20 years before I took on my first public sector appointment. And that was in October of 2006 when President Olusegun Obasanjo appointed me as the presidential committee chairman for the Hajj Commission. At that time, government wanted to revolutionize Hajj and they decided to get somebody with a purely private sector background. Uh, because of the time it took for us to get screened, because it coincided with Hajj for that year, I operated with a team of about seven people as a presidential committee. Thereafter, the Senate graciously uh, uh, approved my appointment as the first executive chairman of the National Hajj Commission. That was in May of 2007. I was saddled at that time with the role of being the first uh, pioneer chairman of that organization, uh, also saddled with the National Hajj Commission Act, which earlier on was passed by the, by the, great, by the National Assembly. And then we started over a period of eight years with a team of dedicated uh, commissioners with tremendous support from the National Assembly through the various, the two committees on foreign affairs. And I was able to, to basically resuscitate Hajj and put it on a threshold of best practice management. And over the years, we were, able, we were saddled with the responsibility of implementing the act. I do recall at that time, I worked very closely with members of the National Assembly, particularly uh, in the House of Representatives as well as the Senate. I do recall at that time this, the Senate leader, Senator Taslim Folarin, uh, also served as the Amir Hajj and I worked very closely with him. And I'm so happy also to see him here. Uh, having said that, basically uh, the first four years I spent in the Hajj Commission trying to salvage it from what Hajj used to be in Nigeria. And then uh, in 2011, President Goodluck Jonathan uh, found it fit to reappoint me for a second tenure, which I, 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 I did from 2011 to May of 2015 when I finished my second tenure. And uh, with all, and I, during the eight year period, I worked very closely with members of the National Assembly through the uh, House Committee uh, on Foreign Affairs as well as the Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs. And we were able to take Hajj to the point where it is now. And of course, I, I, was, I didn't do it alone. I got tremendous support from members of the National Assembly and from members of the executive. I do recall that distinguished Senator Adua, Odua was one time Minister of Aviation, and she knew the kind of support she gave me with all the airline flights and so on, and I'm forever grateful, ma'am. I also recall that Senator Solomon Adewe, when he was in the House, and was the chairman, and was the chairman of the, I think it is uh, the watchdog, Public Accounts Committee. Initially, I didn't understand him, but I'm forever grateful to you because he told me, 
he said that what we are doing here is to protect you from going to jail. And really, it has helped us as public officers. Thank you very much, sir. So after my eight-year work as the chairman of the pioneer chairman of the National Hatch Commission, uh, Mr. President graciously nominated me to serve as a minister during his first tenure. And I got the opportunity to come into this all the chambers, and I was screened here, and eventually I was appointed minister, and then uh, assigned the portfolio of the minister of the FCT. And I found the assignment in the FCT, with your kind permission, Your Excellency, very interesting, because as you all know, the Federal Capital Territory is a creation of law, and all activities in the FCT are governed by law. But most importantly, the National Assembly also served as the National Assembly of the FCT, going by Section 299 of the Constitution, where the FCT was regarded as if it were a state. So during this period, uh, quickly and briefly, uh, we spent a lot of time with my team trying to rediscover the FCT and take it back to the threshold of what the founding fathers envisaged when the FCT was created. And I think it is with appreciation that we should acknowledge the past military rulers because their decision to establish a center of unity for all of us is something that they have bequeathed to this great nation. So in the FCT, we came at a time when the resources were not adequate. And we came at a time when the public perception of the typical FCT officer was not good. So I, I and my team spent tremendous amount of time to see what we could do. And we identified that the greatest thing we needed to do was to look at the infrastructure. And in doing so, we looked at infrastructures that we felt would provide the greatest benefit to the largest number of people. So we targeted the road network system, the railway, and to a certain extent also we targeted water supply. And that is why for those of you that were in the 8th Senate, you will recall that in May of 2015, if you were to enter Abuja from the airport axis, you would have meandered through so many detours because so many of the bridges were not completed. So we targeted that, completed all the bridges, and they made sure that at least from that sector of the city, you could enter it seamlessly without any problem. And then we put up a bridge that was linking the main arterial road from the airport into the city, which is called Bill Clinton Bridge. And now it's there. When you drive there, you, you think it has been there all the years. But in so doing, I want to really uh, pay tribute to one of my predecessors as minister, who is seated in this hall of chambers, Senator Alero, because he was the person that made sure that the master plan that incorporated the airport expressway was initiated. And that is why you have that 10 lane uh, road there. And we are eternally grateful to you, sir. So ha having to tackle the airport arterial road, we looked at the entry point from the Kubwa Niger State Axis through the Zuba. And thereafter also we completed a number of bridges and now it is there. The one that was, took some time is entering Abuja through the Nasarawa State, through the Nyanya AYA axis. We completed Goodlaw Jonathan Expressway, opened up the area. And the whole idea is that uh, we, we envisage that by so doing, it will make it easier for all the hundreds of thousands of commuters that live in the satellite towns to make it easy for them to come into the city. And then, of course, it's public knowledge that we completed the Abuja Light Rail, which was on, on the drawing board and was under construction for quite some time. And basically, we did that by making sure that the project was funded. And it's now a done deal. And we do hope that the 9th Senate 
will approve the pending order from pending uh, request from the Ministry of the FCT for the approval of the foreign loan that will enable the FCT procure the relevant coaches. But all the railway stations, 12 of them along the corridor have been. So uh, finally, without taking too much of your time, sir, we realize also that a city like Abuja, for it to be a city of our dream, and also to make it one of the best cities in the world, and the first city in Africa, we had to go back to the basics and ensure that everything was done according to the rule of law. Land administration was a huge challenge. It reached a point whereby if you had a land document, you were not sure whether it was genuine or not genuine. And we had so many problems of double allocations and all this, which I'm sure some distinguished members are aware. So we revolutionized the land administration and set up a system that made sure that there was proper synergy by all the land departments. It took some time, but at the end of the day now, I can assure the general public that any document you get from the Ministry of the FCT that is land related, you can go to sleep because you know it is genuine. And we also created a system of alternative dispute resolution with respect to land matters, because we realized that there were litigations in the court, some of them 20 years old, and we realized that at the end of the day, everybody suffers. The litigant suff suffers because of the fees, and the city suffers because as long as a land is not... Uh, Honorable realized, Minister, yes. you have, uh, there are a lot of questions to be asked. So I will, um, I will ask you to round up so that we go into the question session. Thank you very much, our distinguished senator. In rounding up, uh, I want to thank uh, you particularly. I didn't mention the Senate President, but he has been extremely helpful to me during all the years that I had mentioned that I was in the Hajj Commission, and even during my first tenure uh, in the Ministry of the FCT. And of course, I want to thank Mr. President, who have found it, uh, who found me worthy out of so many qualified candidates from my state to reappoint me to come for this screening. And finally, I cannot complete this address without acknowledging the support I got from Senator Dino Melae, who was my chairman when I was minister in the FCT. He has a tremendous knowledge and passion for Abuja, and I worked very closely with him. I want to also thank Senator O.K. Jeff Emanuel, who was a member of the House uh, when he was chairman of the House Committee on the FCT. And of course, other members of the House that I served under were Hema Hembe, Sajios S. Ogun, and so many members here who have worked through it. And finally, uh, distinguished senators, I have had a very good working relationship with the National Assembly. And I have come with a number of National Assembly members. And if people say I have been successful in my public sector career, I must sincerely say it was because of the support of the National Assembly. And I think I'll be right if I say that by association, I'm a member of the National Assembly. And, and I do hope that distinguished Senator and Senate President, what other members of the National Assembly have enjoyed, if you agree that by association I'm a member, I will appreciate if I enjoy it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you very much for that presentation. Now, now I can see order. <laughs> Distinguished colleagues, I, I can see that this club of National Assembly membership is becoming very popular. So you are welcome. Senator Mohamed Adumalero. Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Chair, my distinguished colleagues, uh, the immediate First Minister of uh, FCT, my successor, and now also a ministerial nominee. Mr. President, I think the nominee has appeared before the Senate almost three times. First, when he was appointed as chairman of the Hajj Commission. 
was cleaned by a committee on the Senate and he was passed. Secondly, in 2015, when he was nominated as Minister of the Federal Republic, he appeared before us here in this alert chamber. We screened him, we asked him several questions, and he answered them eloquently. Mr. President, from what he said, he gave us his uh, performance as chairman of the uh, Hajj Commission. He equally abridged his performance as minister of FCT. Mr. President, there is no point we continue to do. To no, that's the end. No. Mr. President, I don't think there is any need for us to delay asking him to go. He has done, he has done very well. Uh, he has mentioned critical infrastructure that is needed in FCT. And what impressed me most, Mr. President, all abandoned infrastructure he inherited. He continued with them, and he completed quite a number of them. And he also decided to extend development at the satellite towns. And that's why people are no longer living in the city. The city is now decongested. People are now going to live in satellite towns. Mr. President, not only that, water supply is very, very critical to a city like Abuja. When I was minister, I did my very best to complete phase three and phase four of the uh, water treatment plant. And from what he said, he was able to complete it when he became minister of FCT. There are so many things that need to be said, but I pleased with my colleagues, from, particularly from the other side. No objection. Here from this side, too. Order, order. I'm sure. Order. I'm, I'm sure there will be no objection. So, Mr. President, with your kind permission, I, 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 I want you to put the question. Let the nominee take a bow and go. Thank you very much. Senator Ishatu Dahiru Amin. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting in chair, my distinguished uh, colleagues. Mm -hmm. I would like to use this opportunity to say to my colleagues a very big thank you and to reiterate to them yes. that Adama Kokos will forever remain grateful for the <laughs> Yes. Listen to me uh, for the support that uh, for the support being accorded to us right from the inception of this uh, ninth Senate. Yes. My nominee, let me start by congratulating you for being renominated by Mr. President to be the Minister of Federal Republic of Nigeria. You have proved to Mr. President that your initial nomination was not a mistake. And for those of us who knows you, years back, are always proud of your record because wherever you walk, you leave a track record of integrity, landmark of fairness, equity and justice to all of, to everyone. Mm. Mr. President, sitting in chair, my distinguished colleagues, this is one Nigeria, Nigerian who is down to earth. This is one Nigerian who is a uh, who is, who, who is, um, uh, who, when a minister, during his uh, ministerial uh, dura uh, this thing, duration, he drives in a convoy of only two vehicles. This is one, this is one Nigerian who is a silent achiever. My distinguished colleague, this is, he is a rare Nigerian. So at this point, Mr. President, sitting in chair, my distinguished colleagues, 
having been screened so many times by this, by this uh, distinguished uh, Halo Chamber, I will really appreciate mm -hmm. and crave the indulgence of my distinguished colleague mm -hmm. to accord him all the privileges he deserves. Thank you. Thank you. Senator, Senator Binos Dauda Yaro. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, my name is Vino Siaro, representing Adama South. Today, I'm a proud member of this National Assembly because the candidate coming from a state is a product that everybody can see, is well packaged, is well qualified, does not require to be marketed. <laughs> Mr. President, I believe the CV we received today, if we had got it yesterday, there would have been no need to even ask him to even make any statement. Because this is very, very comprehensive. And the fact that Mr. President, the President of the Federal Republic, President Buhari, found him suitable, found him competent. Only 11 out of the more than 50 senators that uh, ministers that served to be renominated indicates that he has performed very well to the satisfaction of Mr. President. Therefore, Mr. President and distinguished colleagues, colleagues, I say let's accord this competent gentleman all the privileges that he deserves. Thank you. Senator Elisha Clifford Ishaku Abo. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues, as you can see from both sides of the aisle, this side and this side, this Senate unanimously agreed that this illustrious son of Adamawa State. Let me tell you, Mr. President, this CV is just an abridged version. If you bring complete CV, we will be reading like in volumes. <laughs> this is just an abridged version. As you can see that from this side of the aisle and from that side, our, this our Listro son has built bridges over time. The shout of bow and go is even coming more from PDP. I follow my colleagues from Adamawa State and indeed the entire Senate to ask our brother from Adamawa State to please Take a bow and go. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Distinguished colleagues, is it the wish of this Senate? No, I have not completed it. <laughs> is it the wish of the Senate that the nominee Text about and go. Yes. I've not put the question yet. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have it. Take about and go. That was the screening of the immediate past Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Musa Bello from Adamawa State. Well, he took time to present his achievements in the last four years, and then senators, five, the five senators who spoke concurred to what he has presented.